Celeste is... Phenomenal. The diverse mechanics of each chapter, the provocation of the B-sides, and the tightly focused challenges of the C-sides. It's a game that's become one of my proudest accomplishments. And a little while after I got every achievement in the game, I found out about two achievements that the Xbox doesn't have. A few times. You might even say I couldn't stop finding out about them. I'm of course talking about Chapter 9, otherwise known as Farewell, and the secret one-of-a-kind collectible, the Moonberry. Farewell opens to a grim scene. The old lady is incredibly dead, and Badalyn is telling us how much we suck for not going to the funeral. The only thing that could save this mood is if a bird were to land on her tombstone and squawk in my face. After that, only one thing crossed Madeline's mind. I gotta catch this fucking bird. In order to do that though, we have to play on its home turf, above Celeste Mountain, passing through the clouds all the way up until I reach the stars. And up here, there's a few things you should know. First, Madeline pussies out, so we're stuck with only one dash. This chapter is also going to be expecting every bit of advanced movement tech that the game has taught me so far. And the third thing to know, this is a big one, I haven't played in three months. Oh. That's not correct at all. I sure hope this isn't the hardest thing I've ever done. First screen of the chapter and we've already got something new. No, not the berry, but this purple thing. It's like those green dash charges all throughout the game, except you get a double dash instead. Guess I didn't need you after all, Madeline. I move through the next few rooms, slowly improving as I got back into the groove of things. Oh clutching it out here. Hell yeah, brother. Everything was going well right up until this room. It's pretty simple in concept. Navigate the springs and falling platforms all the way to the other side. The problem is when you get to the other side, you'll realize that you need to carry both of these dashes all the way through. I was pretty sure I knew what the correct route was, but I just couldn't figure out this third spring. <laughs> I'm baffled. I'm, I'm baffled. No matter what I did, I couldn't hit the spring without using a dash. I ended up bashing my head against the wall for like 20 minutes before I swallowed my pride and watched someone else do it. How do you do that? He did exactly what I tried to do. How do you... Is there a way to fall faster? You can hold down to fall faster! Yeah, turns out you can. And it's called fast fall. Who would've thought? If you hold down while falling, Madeline will bend the space around her just to fall faster. I fucking hate you. Fuck off! It's okay, it's okay. I understand it now. I get it. See? <laughs> oh, got it. And I'm good at the game. That's what they say about me. You can see her like, uh, like tilt up. I love that. Oh, you fucking dash into the spring and get slightly faster. Oh, Jesus. Titty fucking Christ. Okay. I continued running through the chapter, and on my journey, I found a fishy friend. These guys are really cool. You can bounce on them from the top, kind of like a spring, but when you do, they'll drop down, making them useful for future parts of the same section. And if you come at them from the sides instead of the top, what a funky little guy. We're a little early, but I think these fish might be my favorite mechanic. Oh, that was really lucky. I was not planning for that. <laughs> A few more screens down and we get to meet the other rambunctious little rascal of farewell, the jellyfish. And the jellyfish is cool as hell. You can grab onto him and when you jump, you'll drift down much slower. The same way umbrellas work in real life. Don't believe me? Climb on your roof and give it a try. Now, why does that make the jellyfish cool as hell? Okay, so he drifts. And first of all, don't ever disrespect him like that. He's perfect. Second, I'm getting there. In this room, the chapter really starts to open up. Once you step in, five locks appear and a red bubble just above your head. A simple challenge. Collect five keys. The main room is a jumbled mess to navigate. Hidden roots, electricity everywhere, even collecting things just to use it on another screen. But this big screen is here for a good reason. To give you the tools needed to get through this chapter. The first big thing is power boxes. Dash into them twice and all the electricity in the area will disappear. At least now it's easy to run around. Which is good because we'll need to go into five side rooms for those five keys. This room teaches you how to be sick with it with the jellies. There it is. That's a spike, not grass. Throwing it against the wall and then dashing towards the jelly when you grab it gives you some nice momentum. One down. This room teaches you a similar lesson about jellies, except you use it for a horizontal boost. Two down. The next one I did is found on the very top left of the room. I'm pretty sure they wanted you to do this close to last, and it shows. Oh. Oh. 
Oh, bitch! I did it out of order the second time. Well, I'm gonna save myself the death. How about that? Ah, oh, the second time is so much harder! Well, that's unfortunate. With a little practice, though, I was able to nail the timing. Marvelous. Three down. This one lets you know that jellies are impervious to the hazards that would kill you, while also teaching you the concept of leaving the jellyfish and reuniting on the other side. Four down. And now, we're cleaning it up with number five. Oh, Jesus Christ. I, I got so confused just looking at the layout of the level. I have no idea what to do. Oh, good lord, man. Jesus, what was that? What a weirdo. I forgot how to do everything. Some of the- Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, that was cool. Let's do that again. <laughs> Good. Now that we've got all five keys, we can make a stylish exit. Oh, there's a platform there. You really ruined my moment. There's another platform there, this sucks! After we launch up through the Dancing Stars, beautiful screen by the way, we get introduced to probably the biggest problem I had with Farewell. Um... Okay. A little confused on that. Oh, I did not see the cloud. Literally did not process the cloud. It happened so many times. I'd see a new screen and just completely miss an essential part of the route. What's with all the shit in the background? Get it out of here. I'm trying to play Celeste and I can't bouncy on the clouds if I can't see them. Okay, noticing a lot of uh, throw the jellyfish through spikes here. Loving that. Okay, that's weird. Oh shit! A rat! Holy shit, I was not expecting that. Oh! That was, that was nothing. I, that was, none of that was planned. <laughs> Outstanding. Outstanding in a field. Now, this screen is just exceptional. It takes all the mechanics you just learned with the five keys and mashes them all together with a couple extra wrenches thrown in for fun. It took a lot of specific positioning and a little trial and error, but seeing it all come together made it clear that this was going to be one of the better chapters of the game. Uh-oh, dipshit, pop quiz. How do you get this key? What, are you just gonna drop down there and dash back up in Biden's America? You gotta bring the fish down to the key and blow it up, but it's too far to the left. So what you do is you use the platform to scoot it over to the left before bonking it down the second time. A little kaizo, boinging, and zooming later, <laughs> we're already on the last level. One more section, and it's all over. Alright, throw. I immediately fucked it up. It's getting goofy. Fuck. Got it, got it. Got it. Snot it, even. I need to turn left and grab that or I'm going to commit a crime. I'm gonna do it! Oh! It did deserve to be the final room of the chapter, but still, after a few minutes, I was able to wrap it up and get the heart. Oh yeah, the bird. I have to break your neck. With a reminder of what the original goal was, I was back on track. Oh shit, fire! I came across an internet cafe conveniently situated at the end of the universe and decided to step in. Even more conveniently, it had something useful to teach me. Wave dashing. The idea is to jump and dash towards the ground at an angle, then jump at the end of the dash. If done at the right time, you'll get a big boost forward and still have your dash as well. This is the normal one, but there are so many other kinds of wave dashes. There's the wave dash, the vertical wave dash, the standing wave dash, the reverse wave dash, everything you'd ever need, and they're all called wave dash. Right after learning about it online, you'll also be shown how to do it by the shadow of you that's stuck in the static, which is a little unsettling. One final challenge of two wave dashes and a wall bounce in a row, and I was ready to graduate from the tutorial and get to the real chat. There's that fucking bird! Kick his ass! Suck his toes! Wah. After the failed attempt, Madeline got so mad that the world started breaking down around her. The anger must have fueled me though, because I was starting to get a lot better. Outstanding. I'm kind of schmoovin' right now. <laughs> I'm no longer schmoovin'. Those days are behind me. Fuck. <laughs> hey, it's my man! Scrunkly. If everything before the heart was the A side, everything after is definitely the B side. They teach you a few new tricks and boom. Longer routes using everything you've learned, mechanics from multiple chapters going 
forwards, backwards, and forward again just to finish one section, it's nuts. And it's the best this game has to offer. Throughout the game, there were definitely some chapters that were stronger than the others for me, but this one blows all of them out of the water. Oh, hold on, I'm so stressed out. What the fuck? I nailed it! Stop doing that. It's such a weird... You're a weird person. You're weird, dude! I don't know if I'm gonna get it this try, but that's good. Oh! <laughs> Ooh, chapter 8 mechanics. Not in love with this. Oh, you're such an asshole. Stars are cringe! Stars are so cringe! I hate these fucking stars. These stars are so annoying. They make this whole thing so much worse. Bitch. Bitch. Oh, you're a bitch. All right. Okay. That was weird. A few screens down, and we're at what was maybe the most frustrating screen for me. The ice room. Well, this just looks fucking miserable. <laughs> ice balls floating all over the place, marching down their predetermined paths, and an updraft helping you on your way. Just getting to the top would be pretty easily managed, but you also have to get six keys on the way. The first two are nothing to worry about, but the others are guarded by a wall of ice balls. Cringe! Not only do you have to break through to get the key, but you also have to get out and continue climbing. And while there is infinite ice down below, you only get these five per circle. So if you use them all and then fall, oh fuck, you're done. It's all right, we got it, we got it, we got it. Even if you manage to get all that done, they go ahead and change it up on you at the top. Instead of ice, it's fire. So they take your platforms and you have to get in and out in one motion. Shit. Shit. Shit, it happened again. This one sucks. Sucks my ass. I did some platforming against the wind, had a bit of a mishap, I wanted to see the level! <laughs> and with the wind at my back, blew through the next room. The section after had a bunch of wall bounces that definitely didn't take 20 minutes, and I finished it up without a problem. Oh Jesus, you're fast. I made it though. I had a long ride with Kevin, a shitty ride through the stars. Holy shit. Don't you dare. I knew you were gonna do that. That's so fucked up! But luckily, all my troubles are behind me. Oh, fuck. The cassette room, which doesn't have a cassette tape, but I don't know what else to call it, is garbage. All the praise I have for this chapter, forget about it for a little bit. Uh, yeah, this isn't great. Cassette rooms never bothered me, but there's two things this one does differently. It's long, and it has four colors. Not even taking into account that it's the most technically demanding one there is. And the whole time I'm dealing with all of this, I have to listen to this fucking Salvation Army worker just jingling away in my ear. If Farewell is the ultimate test of skill, this is the ultimate test of mental fortitude. Playing it was ass, and beating it was more bitter than sweet. Once I beat it, I caught the bird, wrestled it to the ground, Ground, looked it dead in the eye and said, this isn't my grandma. That might not make sense. Basically, Madeline thought that the bird was to grandma as Madeline was to her. But it's just a bird and this is just a dream. Now we need to make a daring escape while freeing the bird, which is weird considering we know it's a dream now, but whatever. I raced through the next few levels with the help of Madeline and the bird, turning off the power in each room. Well, that is unfortunate. Oh. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother! <laughs> oh, that was all according to plan, baby. And with the power of friendship, I got to the end, and the moment you've all been waiting for, farewell. The trend holds strong here. We're done with the A and B sides, time for the C side. It takes almost three minutes for a successful run. You can't even see a section of the route, and it combines everything you've done so far while also adding a couple new ideas. By the way, if you're confused why I said we just made it to farewell when that's what the chapter's called, this section has the same name. Bit of a nesting doll situation. It starts out pretty simple. A jelly dash into a puffer push. But even something this simple is misleading. Usually, it would work the way I wanted to, but every now and then, this would happen. Why? I don't understand that. I'm not pressing jump. I tried testing all kinds of things to figure out what makes it happen, but it ended up just feeling like a 20% chance to die for no reason. And if the first obstacle gave me this much trouble, I knew I was going to be in for a long ride. Oh, uh, well don't miss him. 
Don't miss him. Up here, the electricity turned into a maze. Narrow corridors, tight turns, moving hazards, and the ever-present risk of smacking into a wall. You guys remember that old maze game where when you touch the wall, you'd die? Oh! At least there isn't a jump scare at the end of this one. I snake past the two electric balls, moving on to the reunion with my arch nemesis. Stars. But they were never an issue for me. I don't know if I ever died here. Through the minefield of pufferfish, I got to the first new idea they have. A bit of a trust fall. You need to float up as far as you can before throwing your jelly off to the right. That unlocks the gate, and now that trust fall turns into free fall. Uh, yep. I was couldn't have said it better myself. Okay. I've got it in me. I don't have it in me. Why? <laughs> what happened? Why'd I go sideways? I'm the calmest little boy in the sea. I'm a little less calm than I once was. I have been overtaken. Someone is more calm than me. It's so long. It's so long. Oh, shit. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. That's so fucked up. I saved it though. It took a long ass time, but I got through it all, did the last jellyfish jumps, and that is farewell done. Wait, what do you mean, Chapter f Once you get to the final power box and destroy it, you'll want to go to the left instead of the right. You're now officially on the Moonberry Path. This might seem scary since you're not in a new room yet and all of your progress is on the line, but don't worry. The Moonberry route gives you a checkpoint. Fuck. <laughs> Bummer. Well, it's it does give you a checkpoint. I just didn't get to it yet. Remember not to fuck up. The good news is the section isn't that hard. Holy shit. The bad news is you're three minutes into the run and you don't want to have to redo all of that shit again. So the pressure can make you play much worse. Oh my God. I was just trying to settle and get off the spring and I just went right into the spike. Because of that, my heart was pounding and my hands were sweating the most out of any section in Farewell. But again, it's not bad. Wave dash, wall bounce, girl boss, and you're up to a safe spot before you know it. Oh God. Hey, that was stressful. What the fuck, bro? <laughs> This is the checkpoint, by the way. A little more climbing that's much more precise, as well as a bit of stamina management. Then we go into this room, which just feels like the devs going, ah? And we've actually, finally made it. The last room of the chapter, the Moonberry Room. It goes so high into the air that we can't even see the top, so there's no room to strategize until you're in the thick of it. Let's get going. Oh, we get there, boys. We get there in the end. Oh, there it is. It's Moonberry Clock. Holy shit. Ah. <laughs> After a little over 15 hours, I finally got there. It took a lot of effort, but it never really made me that mad. And I maintain that it is by far the most well-designed chapter in the game. And now, it's done. How many deaths we got? Hmm. 